Hello world and welcome back to the Benita Show. We are here today with Antonio Vargas. Many of you know him as Huggy Bear. I'm so thankful and so excited to have him here today. It's a true blessing and the camera crew is excited. They're not showing it. They're trying to be calm because we're on we're on live here, but we're excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for taking time. Well, I, I, I truly feel the calmness and uh and I think it stems from from you because of your enthusiasm and uh, and the setting. I think it's really casual. It's really relaxed, and um, and I'm ready to give you what I got. Thank you, thank you, Antonio. Thank you so much for coming. Thank comment. you. So you are here. What brings you to St. Louis is that you're doing a play, The Real McCoy, down at the um, the Black Rep. You having fun? Absolutely. Um, and after 51 years in the business, uh, to still feel like I'm having fun and not be jaded about certain things, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really special to be in the well where it all started. You know, right. the theater is like, before there was film and television, there certainly was theater. And, and to have the, the history that I've been blessed to have by starting in a film and then being nurtured in the theater in New York and and now culminating um, by being having the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to come to St. Louis and work with Ron Himes at the St. Louis Black Rep, um, one of the last bastions of black theater in, in the country in terms of servicing a, a community and um, in terms of longevity because uh, I saw the beginnings of the Negro Ensemble Company and, mm -hmm. and other theater companies around the country who are, who are struggling and some who no longer exist but for, to be in this special place in St. Louis, um, where the St. Louis Black Rep was born, mm -hmm. and, and to be able to come and work here, it's been really, really uh, an honor. Now you, Antonio, you've been in the business since you were 14. Yeah. 14. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but I was one of 11 children growing up in New York. My mother, father both from the Caribbean, my dad was Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. my mother was a combination of Trinidad and Grenadian, and, mm -hmm. uh, but she was born in Cuba because her father went there to work in the sugar mills and uh, as an engineer or as an engineer and, and uh, so she was born in Cuba and I think I had an aunt who was born in Panama. Anyway, they all migrated to New York and, uh, and I became, I guess, the uh, a war baby uh, mm -hmm. or a, a baby boomer because okay. I was born in 1946 mm -hmm. and um, one of 11 children. Uh, my dad worked for the Department of Sanitation which meant mm -hmm. he was a garbage man and picked up trash in New York right, right. and I'll say with a lot of dignity and, uh, mm -hmm. and taught me a work ethic that I didn't even know I, that I had was mm -hmm. getting but he stuck to it and he, he retired in that job and as, as a sort of a supervisor or community activist in, in terms of the Department of Sanitation. But meanwhile, um, I was being one of a big family like that. Uh, I was sort of what we call um, the peacemaker in the family. I was called the lawyer in the family yeah. and sort of my mom deemed as a sensitive one because I could solve other people's arguments and, and, um, and there was a lot of discourse in a loving kind of way mm -hmm. when you have that many people. Um, trying to survive um, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know it's but I uh, at uh, age of 14 and I, I was, was going to go back and say okay. what we could say is that I was an adult child right. now we have all these you know categories and whatnot for, uh -huh, uh -huh. for those kind of uh -huh. uh, kind of things but um, so I always cared about other, making other people happy and, and you know and at the expense of of my own self in a lot of ways, but because I always felt different, and my mother saw an ad in the newspaper it was a it was a Amsterdam News it was a black newspaper published in Harlem, okay. and they were casting a film uh, about gangs called The Cool World, and this is right after the civil rights movement, and there was a lot of stuff going on that I didn't even know about off yeah. Broadway right. in terms of the rebirth of, of theater through mm -hmm. the through the struggle, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so the cool world was cast in, in neighborhoods. They were going around different neighborhoods and just mm -hmm. taking people who didn't have any experience. And my mother urged me to go down and try out. And uh, so I owe a lot of it to her uh, because when I went, um, I was able to interpret the script because I could read well. I was just in the eighth grade, getting ready to go into high school. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and I got a small part in the film, mm-hmm. and and I also got a big part in terms of a big part of my life, you know, starting to take shape because I was accepted by a family of artists and people who felt different like me and yeah. strange and, yeah. and, and were doing something about it, performing, getting into character wow. and stuff like that. So it was, um, you know, it was, I felt like I, I had a chance to be born, yeah. sort, of, sort of born again and symbolically into this business and into this craft and into this feeling business. Mm-hmm. So um, that was the beginning and by the time I got out of high school I was cast in a play mm-hmm. um, called The, the Toilet by <laughs> Mary Baraka Toilet. now but Leroy Jones then. Uh-huh. And while I was doing that play I was cast in another play that was going to Europe, mm-hmm. the Amen Corner by James Baldwin. And, uh, and with some distinguished black actors. Uh, in fact, Claudia McNeil, who played the mother in Lorraine Hansberry's uh, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, mm-hmm. You've done so much stuff. No, what's Lorraine Hansberry? So I'll go back. Lorraine Hansberry, Raising the Sun. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Raising the Sun. Yeah, so, um, you know, there were so many people uh, when, I, when I was doing the, the I was doing the toilet. <laughs> I was okay. in, the toilet, in, the, in the toilet, and they were casting a, a play called The Amen Corner okay. by James Bowen, which was set to go on a European tour. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the last young men to go and try out for the role, but I got the role of, of David, the juvenile lead in uh-huh. the play. Uh-huh. And, uh, and there were some distinguished actors uh-huh. in the play. Uh, Claudia McNeil played the lead, who uh-huh. was um, the mother in Lorraine Hansberry's Raising in the Sun, mm-hmm. and a lot of other actors who are you know, no longer even here today, but yeah. certainly uh, showed me the way. So uh, it's just a, an incredible kind of story that mm-hmm. maybe one day I'll even put into a book. But, but I, bathed, I bathed in the River Jordan on my 18th birthday uh-huh. because we were toured all over Europe, and which included... Uh, Four cities in Israel. Wow! And, wow! Uh, and Israel, seven, I've been there. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. Beautiful. And it was just—I mean, it was so new then too, mm-hmm. in the early '60s yeah. that uh, I didn't even know. I mean, we, we, we Tel Aviv, Haifa, mm-hmm. Jerusalem, and a, and a Roman city called Caesarea. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Jerusalem trip was memorable because I did get a chance to do that, bathe in the River Jordan. Now I have to ask one quick question. While you were there, did you take the time to look up at the Israel sky? Did you ever look at that sky at night? Oh, uh, you know. Probably I can't just, remember. I was just so overwhelmed. We, to be in Israel. To be in Israel, to yeah. have a little hotel on the on the Medi- on the on, on the sea uh-huh. and uh, and to be able to listening to this music and it was just yeah. uh, just incredible. This incredible experience that um, you know, if I wasn't an actor, I think I would have been probably overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed, but I had a chance to like play it yeah. off, like, yeah, yeah. like, and I'd even take a little camera with me because uh-huh. I said, oh, these, I'm just gonna have these memories in my mind, but uh-huh. I wish I had taken pic- more pictures. Yeah, because there's so much to see over there, and I've asked about the sky because when I went there, I noticed how beautiful the blue is completely different from in the States, maybe because it didn't have a lot of lights to block mm-hmm. out the, the prettiness of the blue and the stars, but I was the prettiest sky i ever seen, but Anyway, wow, you just you have you just went to that audition when you were fourteen and your mom sent you and from there you have been non stop. Yeah, it's it's been a, you know, and the, the whole idea of the of the journey is that now today I can say that uh, you know, it was such a spiritual ride that I yeah. didn't even know that I was on. Yeah. You know, to say that I've been chosen to be sitting here with you fifty one years later talking about fifty one years of wow. of doing something that uh, that's been a gift that you were born to do i, I guess Basically, yeah. <laughs> i think it's played out that way and, it, I yeah. and i didn't even know that i mean i think what's what's so amazing is that we were both born to be sitting here talking about it and that's <laughs> you know that, that's yeah. amazing too it is it is thank you um you uh one of one of your um you're le- you're a legend i don't know if anybody has said that to you and i'm glad <laughs> to be able to sit here to tell you that you are a legend if nobody has told you that before. Be- and, and, and it goes back to some of the things that you've done. Let's say Starsky and Hutch. That was the first, that, that film started, uh, that show started back in the 70s, the first TV show to um, actually hire minority actors returning roles. It's a, uh, you know, timing is everything. And mm-hmm. I, you know, 
I had no idea that that, and I, again, like I know whose shoulders I stand on, you yeah. know, and yeah, you know, and certainly Bill Cosby was the first black leading man in the series, as far as I know. Okay. But at the same time, this whole use, which came out of the black exploitation period, where we were mm -hmm. doing these films mm -hmm. that I did many of, and that transitioned into into the um, that people felt comfortable enough, the, the, the white power structure felt comfortable enough to start incorporating characters like a Huggy Bear yeah. into general mainstream television, and that right. was big time. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was a whole uproar when Harry Belafonte, you know, when Petula Clark touched Harry Belafonte's arm during a song, mm -hmm. I think it was on the Ed Sullivan show, and so we were living in a time where we're just coming, you know, civil rights movement was, was very, very active, mm -hmm. or just being over by the 70s, not over, mm -hmm. but that part of the struggle was being over. Now it was sort of incorporating, you know, some of the characters and the lifestyles of, because we, the Cosby Show wasn't ready to happen then, mm -hmm. you know. We had to sort of communicate through, through the work about the ex our, our experience through characters like Huggy Bear and, and, and the rooster on, mm -hmm. on Beretta. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. so it was sort of the beginning of, 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 of getting the foundation mm -hmm. for mainstream shows like The Cosby Show where a black was playing a doctor, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's really incredible that Bill Cosby had those two experiences from, yeah. from, from I Spy to the Huxtables, you know, yeah. and Fat yeah. Albert and all of that. So, uh, it's just I've just been just in the right place at the right time, and just doing what I do, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know when people sort of, I mean it's really humbling when somebody calls you an icon, mm -hmm. or somebody calls you a, a legend. legend, and you know, and Ron Himes had this award at the at the Black Rep, mm -hmm. it's called the Woody Awards, and I think they're going to bring them back again, okay. but uh, but uh, theaters like. Uh, St. Louis, uh, I mean the South Carolina uh, Film uh, Theater Festival, mm -hmm. um, which a friend of mine started and passed away, and then mm -hmm. Ron Himes started mm -hmm. giving awards to people, yeah. you know, um, Lifetime Achievement Awards, and I was honored to get a Lifetime Achievement Award mm -hmm. from, from the Black Rep in 2003, I believe, Yay. and, and um, you know, so it's just a, you know, that that commitment to you know, to support yeah. that theater, yeah. Yeah. and and to be able to humbly say thank you yeah. for people who, you know, who so deem or honor me by saying you're a legend or what you did yeah. for me, and and it's really I guess it comes from when you look back, it's from a body of work. Yeah. You know, when I look back, I, I didn't ever think about what's behind me, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, it comes to okay. me through the exposure of people who have yeah. who have watched me or or been exposed to what I do over the years yeah. to remind me, because I keep sort of into trying to just look ahead, you know, and just enjoy this day. Mm. And uh, yes. so it's, it's, it's pretty special.